Hey guys, Lieutenant Dan here with an update on the progress of my table. It's been like three months, I think, since the last time that I uploaded a video. And uh, I ran into some issues, but I'm going to show you what I've done. Um, if you remember the last video, I basically got done with all the painting and the weathering and things like that. And the last thing that I was going to do was add four walnut boards that would go all the way around the table to finish it off and then go through the staining process of that. So that's kind of where I ran into the problem and that's the, during the staining process. But let me show you what I've been doing. Here we go. All right, so I went to a sawmill about 30 minutes or so away from where I live and this huge building with just racks and racks of wood everywhere, different type, different species and so on. And I was into the walnut. So uh, what you see here are basically three levels of walnut, three different thicknesses. And uh, if you've never been to a sawmill, it's not like going to Home Depot or Lowe's where the wood is... Everything is uh, cut the same thickness and widths and uh, lengths and things like that. Um, what it is is uh, everything is cut to the same thickness. and um, But then, uh, based on your measurements, you really need to go find the piece that's going to fit within your uh, size range of, in, in my case, the, the height and the, the widths. And so what I had to do is I had to go through every single pieces of walnut, the ones that are in the middle there, the darker ones, to, I went through and measured and, and made sure that, uh, you know, because a lot of the pieces are have deformities and things like that in them. So I had to make sure that whatever I selected was going to work with my table. So after about an hour or so, I finally grabbed four pieces at a good cost of like 250 bucks. But hey, I wanted walnut, so that's the price I paid. All right, so I got my four pieces of walnut, and I brought them home. And the next day, I went over to a buddy's house where I would... Uh, plane them down to be all the exact si uh, same thickness as well as cut them uh, to be the same height. Uh, so I used his table saw. He had a planer as well so that uh, all of the sideboards would be nice and uniform. And I brought those back to my place and using my miter saw, um, I cut them to be the proper length. So what I would do is I would cut the first one to be the proper width or length. And then I would cut the uh, 45 degree miters. And I would then uh, temporarily place that board um, here, the, the end. You can see I, I put some clamps there so that uh, I could then start cutting the miters on the next board. And so I, I found that um, through the previous uh, miter cutting that I've done, the secret of miter cutting to get a nice tight 45 degree uh, cut is to really sneak up on it. Don't just don't think you're going to be done with one cut. Um, it's best to uh, kind of sneak up on it um, purposely, not cut it precisely. And then uh, once you uh, kind of temporarily place it up there, you can start removing wood at like a 32nd of an inch. And I found that that's uh, the best process. Uh, you know, sometimes it may take, you know, three times, three cuts uh, to get it to fit perfectly. But in the end, uh, once you uh, kind of do that on all the corners, you'll uh, be rewarded with a very nice tight, corner. All right, so one morning I went to Dunkin' Donuts and got myself a big coffee because I was going to start mounting these walnut boards. So what I did was got out some wood glue 
I put it on the back side of it uh, where it would be in contact with the, uh, the side of the table. And I would stick it on that uh, table and I'd use the clamps to temporarily uh, hold it there. You can see I had little uh, pieces of uh, scrap wood that I would make sure that when I was clamping down, I wasn't going to make marks um, when I'm cinching those clamps down. And then uh, after I had it precisely where it was supposed to be, I would then uh, take some screws and uh, uh, screw them uh, to the side. And all this was to ensure that the uh, the table would be... Uh, the would be flush, you know, up against that, uh, the inner frame, if you will. Then I would, uh, pretty much let that, uh, four hours, uh, sometimes I'd even let it go for an entire day and just get up the next day or what have you, whatever my week was like. And then I would just repeat for the next side as you can see on the longer sides, I had I had to use a lot of clamps uh, to get that thing. You know the boards weren't uh, weren't always exactly flat, so I had to make sure that the uh, the uh, the walnut was up against uh, the table flush. Um, so anyway, I, I would use a, a lot of clamps to do that, um, and that was pretty much about it. All right, so now the next step was to sand this thing down so it was smooth as smooth. So what I did was, one, I didn't uh, capture that footage. It's pretty uh, long and laborious. But uh, imagine, if you will, many nights of using 100 grit, 120, 150, 180, then 220, to get it nice and smooth. And then I would move on to the staining phase. Now, this is where I ran into the problem, is that I actually had to repeat the sanding and the staining three times. Yes, three times. I had issues with the stain when I was putting on the poly, um, I the first time is I waited, I didn't wait long enough for the stain to dry. And when I put the poly down, it lifted the stain up. So the second time that I re-sanded everything down using 100, 120, 150, 180, 220, and I re-stained it, and then I waited an entire week and I put down the poly again, and it lifted it again, and I was so ticked off. So then, basically, three months have gone by, and I re-sanded it again, taking it down to 100, and then up to 120, 150, 180, 220, and here is where we're at. And I am ready to stain this thing and I am going to let the stain sit there for one, two, three months. I don't care because I'm not re this thing again. All right, so here we go. Uh, this is the pre-staining steps that I took before I stained this thing. So I used uh, this pre-stained wood conditioner. It's to help so that the stain doesn't uh, blotch up or set on the wood in a blotchy manner. Um, it's really required for softer woods like pine. Uh, walnut is pretty hard. Uh, the first time I used it, um, the second time I forgot to use it, and I really didn't see any blotchiness, but I figured I'm not doing this thing again on my third go-round, and we are going to use it because this thing is going to look perfect when I'm done with it. So uh, you see that uh, the rag, one thing that I forgot to point out is that it's a lint-free rag. So I just bought these at the Home Depot. Um, anyway, so I would, would apply this across the grain, and then I would use a clean lint-free rag to wipe it with the grain, to wipe off any excess. 
So I basically just would do this all the way around the table. Third time's a charm, so they state. Got to get my lucky purple glove out. Get me some lint-free rags. I'm ready to stain this thing for the third time. All right, so I used some stain from Verithane. It's an oil-based stain. It's espresso. Um, it looks really nice when it dries. So there is the stain. So basically what I do is I did a, before I actually began staining uh, three months ago, um, I had to figure out how long to leave the stain there. So I set a timer um, and I had um, figured out that about seven minutes is the best dry time. I did a time test of like five, seven, and 10, and seven seemed to be about the best. So... Um, It'll uh, dry in uh, nice and nice and dark, not too dark. But um, anyway, um, I'd never stained before. It's actually quite simple. You just kind of wipe it on, and then you just wait that amount of time. And then once that time's up, then you start wiping off where you started. All right, so I'm going to speed up the video. Um, it'll be, uh, you'll see me uh, stain, you'll see it dry. Um, so we'll, uh, I'll speed it up so we can get this thing done in uh, two or three minutes. So here we go.
right, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. It is done. It is done. I can't believe it. I started this project back in mid-August of last year. So I uh, had a little bit of hiccups, probably cost me about three months of of issues with the stain, but I took something that was in my brain, put it on paper, something I've never done before, ever, and I created this. This is so awesome. I just love how the different colors of the browns, like the, the stained walnut and how that brings out the dark walnut paint with the cream and the weathered look of uh, all the IPC tracker and so on. Just everything just blends so nice uh, together. I mean, it just came out way better than I thought. But, uh, I mean, this is what I definitely envisioned in my brain, um, you know, over a year ago. Um, I, uh, I learned a lot about myself. Uh, one is, um, you know, try some new things. Um, I never touched, a, you know, a table saw, different uh, uh, techniques I learned along the way on how to, um, you know, make wood look the way it does, uh, even paint and things like that. I never, never painted anything like this or even stained. It's the first time I stained. So I say, you know, if you've never done anything and you want to do something, do it. Nothing's holding you back other than your brain. If you get something in your head, just get it out. And this is what I did. And I just want to thank everybody who has rode along on this journey with me. And I certainly uh, appreciate all the comments and the feedback that you all have given me. Although the table's done, I have some other items that I want to make, uh, like the accessory trays. Um, and some other goodies. And I've already actually started those, so can't wait to make some videos of that just to kind of show you how this uh, project it will evolve. So I'm going to have to call this video a wrap. <laughs>